Welcome back to CS103 Machines, Languages and Computation. This lecture is a brief introduction to sets. You may have heard about sets before. You may have even done some set theory uh, before coming to university. But sets are going to be really important in this class. We're going to need sets to do proofs. And importantly, we're going to characterize functions that we might want a machine to solve in terms of a mapping from one set, the input set, to another set, the output set. So let's have a look at sets. If you recall, I said that the first part of the course, the first half of this semester, will build up towards a proof that there are such things as non-computable functions. And I stated it like this. P is the set of all computer programs, and F is the set of all functions that map one natural number onto another natural number. Then the size of the function set, F, that's this part here, is actually bigger than the size of the program set P, that's this part here. And therefore, there must be some functions in F for which no computer programming can exist. In other words, there are functions that can't be computed. And I'm going to build up to that, that, that proof. So last time, we looked at the notion of proof. And we did a simple proof that if you take two even numbers and add them up, then you get another even number. So that's the kind of thing we're going to try to do here, except the proof is a little more complicated. In this lecture and in the following one, I'm going to start looking at the, the sets in this part of the, uh, in, this, in this statement. The set of all computer programs. What does that mean? The set of all functions. The set of the natural numbers. So let's have a look at what sets are. And we'll begin with the kind of set theory that you probably um, did at school. What exactly is a set? We can describe it as a collection of distinct things, a bag of things, but considered as a whole. So it's a collection, but we're thinking of it as one object. It's a simple idea. It's a very simple idea, in fact, but it is the most important and fundamental concepts in modern maths, and a lot of computer science is based on modern maths. So the idea is that you'll um, see in, for example, functional programming in your second year and in your third year are all based on the idea of set theory. Modern mathematics is actually written in set theory. All of the theorems always use sets, um, a, 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 a proof will usually start with let X be a member of some set and, and so on and so on. So we need set theory for mathematics and we also need set theory in computer science. So it's very important we understand what we're doing with sets. And as I say, it's fairly simple. An example set here is just a collection of three numbers, eight, six, and two, considered as a whole thing. So we give it a name, S. So we can think of it as an object. It's an object containing three things. And in object-oriented programming, so you can have, there is a class of object sets, and you can put things into it. You can also use words. So you could say S is the set of the ages of John's children. Um, I wrote this slide a very long time ago because my children are now very much older than those numbers there. But that's how old they were when I wrote this slide. They were eight, six and two. This is important. In, in a set, order is not important at all. It's, it's not a list. It's not a sequence. So it's just a bag of values. Order's not important. Furthermore, you can't have duplicates in a set. So the set 2886, well, that's not well formed. You can't have duplicates. So the set 2, 8, and 6 is this, exactly the same as the set 8, 6, and 2. So order's not important and no duplicates. 
We've got some um, symbols that we use when writing down sets. If A is a member of the set S, we write A is a member of S using that symbol there. And that means is a member of. If two sets have exactly the same members as they do up here, then they are absolutely identical. And so we use the equality operator between them. We say R is equal to S. They're the same set. <clears throat> if S contains all the elements of R, then R is a subset of S. And we write R, and then we use this symbol here to mean is a subset of. If it's a strict subset, in other words, if R is a smaller set than S, then we don't put the bar underneath. But if it can be equal to, then we put this bar underneath. So this is a sort of less than or equal to symbol, but for sets. How can we describe sets? Well, I've already shown you some ways we can list the items explicitly. Or we can use words, and this is often done in proofs. We can say, let S be the set of all the even numbers that are greater than zero and less than 10. So have a think to yourself what set that would denote and how many elements it would have. So this set would have four elements. It would have the elements two, four, six and eight and it's fairly clear from the description there that that's what this set is we can also use a, the ellipsis notation this is this these three dot dot dots this dot 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 thing is called ellipsis and it basically means use your common sense to fill in the missing values so if i go one two three da 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 a hundred you can fill in the missing values using your common sense and you can come up with the idea that this is the set of all of the uh, integers between 1 and 100 inclusive. Um, sets don't have to have integers in them. I like integers because I'm a computer scientist and I feel very at home with integers because I can represent them using binary values. But you can represent other things and you can put those in your sets as well. So the set of all colors in the French flag, which is also the same as the set of all colors in the United Kingdom flag, is red, white and blue. And sets can themselves contain other sets. Sets are just objects and a set is a collection of objects. So why shouldn't we have sets with sets inside them? So here, S is a set of two elements. One of the elements is the set one, two, three, and the other is the set A, B, C. So here, S has two elements, and this element of S has three elements, and this element of S also has three elements. Notice I didn't call it the first element of S and the second element of S because the items in a list have no order. That's why I didn't say the first element and the second element. Another very powerful way of describing sets is using what's called set builder notation. And we're going to be using this. Let's see how this works. What does this say? It says S is equal to 2n plus 1. And then we read this bar as such that. So it's 2n plus 1, such that n is a member of the set 0, 1, 2, or 3. In other words, what Set Builder does is it builds up the set by considering all of the elements here, one at a time, one at a time, so 0, 1, 2, and 3, plugging it in here to get the value. So it's a bit like going round a, um, a while loop or a for loop in, in computer science. So you go through each element of this, apply the formula, and that's your value. So before you have a look at the next lecture, grab a piece of paper and write down for me 
what elements explicitly are in the set S. And I'll see you in the next lecture.